My name is John McElmurray. And I'm Julian Adams. We're going to be giving you a review of Bastion, which is a game that just recently got released on the Xbox Live portal and on Steam, as well as the Chrome Store. First thing we want to talk about is some of the unique qualities of the game and what brought us to it. The biggest draw for me and for a lot of other people playing Bastion is the reactive narrator, who's voiced by the New York voice actor Logan Cunningham. And he's got a really awesome voice, and he, he plays Rux, who's a mentor in the game for your character, and he really interacts with you and comments on your gameplay in a way that I've not seen many other titles before. If you fall off a cliff, he'll mock you, and it's really pretty funny. And if you go near an item or something like that, he'll tell you about it and how to use it. And the other thing is uh, if you're stuck in the game, and it'll contextually figure out where you are and give you hints based on what you can do next using your items or some skills or something like that. In addition to the narrator, it actually has a very, very polished uh, game quality. It's actually an isometric camera that responds to the game events, and it simplifies, uh, simplifies the visuals. And it's actually a 2D background with a 3D character running around on it, and it actually looks really beautiful. And another thing that we thought was really cool about it is it's, it's a really short uh, game, and it's, the fact that it is polished is surprising because it was only seven people that made it. And usually expect a title of this quality to be made by large game studios with a whole lot of employees. Next thing I want to do is show you some gameplay footage from Bastion. And uh, I'm going to play two videos, and after the first one, Julian will make some comments on it, and on the second one, I'll make some comments. He gets his hands on the care package I sent him. Now, as you see, uh, the character, the kid, picks up a rocket launcher and what's really cool is these weapons aren't meaningless it actually is something that you need to complete the level you actually need it to further in the game another cool thing that is pointed out in this is the camera that shakes during the weapon fires or if a bomb goes off it actually shakes around and it kind of gives a you know another aspect makes you feel like you're inside the game okay we're gonna play the second video Break enough of those things and the calamity rocks slink back into the ground. Those rocks are like tumors, the same kind they are the plant in the bastion. One thing I want to point out about this is another aspect of this game being really polished. If you notice while the kid was getting hurt, it started blurring out the screen and red started seeping in on the edges, which I think is really fun because it actually makes you feel like you're having some inhibitions and you're not able to actually see because that's probably what would happen if you get stabbed by a sword. And, uh, and right here as well, the narrator gives some hints if you notice when those pylons popped up. He was talking about how you need to destroy those in order to make the rocks go away, which is all part of it ties in with the storyline. And the final thing is the terrain is, if you notice, as you move towards it, it comes up from the, from the ground. It sort of appears before you, and it gives this really interesting feel of, like, the game is building itself for you. And it also helps out a lot because, you know, when you're backtracking. Okay, now we're going to talk about the story. It's actually not a long game, but because the story is in-depth and it has great cutscenes and the narrator is on top of it, it really, really makes you come back and want more from the game, and it's it's one of the things that make it such a unique and great game. Okay, we're going to play a really quick uh, cutscene from it. The dead. The dead ain't got to worry about this mess. Our world. She's done. But there's a way to put it back together. So better get ready. There's metal on their nose without them floating up. So if you saw there, uh, they use a combination of these 2D concept art images on different planes and sort of move them around in the background and add these particle effects on top of it and some lighting to it. And it really brings the pictures to life in a way that I think even these 2D cutscenes almost look as good as... as pre-rendered 3D cutscenes, which take a lot of production, they're really high cost, and I don't think the quality is much different between the two. And I think that using After Effects to make this kind of thing, or I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but that's one way. I think that's a really great way of saving cost and keeping the budget of the game down. Next thing I want to talk about is the characters and the level design, and uh, Julian will say some words on that. 
Uh, one thing that blew my mind when I started review or looking into this game was the fact that everything, all the art was done by one person, Gen Z. Picture of hers down there. She uh, maintained a similarity in the design of the enemies so they were easier to identify. That's another cool thing that kept costs down and still kept the game um, brilliant and uh, alive and looking uh, more unique. So, uh, like, like Julian said, Gen Z did all the, the 2D design, and I think that they actually um, outsourced the 3D character work, but you can hardly tell. I mean, the kid, I think, is one of the very few 3D models in the game, and even though there's so little 3D, the game still looks really brilliant, and the isometric camera, and using the 2D uh, backgrounds that are sort of this painterly style gave a really different feel to the game. The last thing I want to talk about is the interface, and Julian will talk about the image in the background. So right here is another image of your basic gameplay and some of the things I want to point out are where things are placed and it actually makes the gameplay more smoother for the uh, for the user. So up at the top left we have your health bar and the experience and right below that there's potions that you can use so you can keep track of uh, all your inventory. And then if you look to the bottom right, you actually have buttons that correspond to your weapons and skills, so you're not sitting there wondering what X does or wondering what B does. And then you have an interactive map that pops up um, when you're going through worlds, and that's in the top right corner. And uh, that's a really, really cool interface that uh, you have. And then on the last thing that I want to say is if you look in it at the middle and it says X and then a pipe, it actually gives you hints once you go uh, towards something. So that helps you uh, go through the game and you're not wandering around aimlessly. Yeah, another thing that's really cool about the interface in Bastion is like Julian said, when you go to this map and you're going between the different elements of the world, uh, it saves a lot of time because you're not having to walk through all these different towns and villages and I know when I played Morrowind, I spent a lot of time walking between cities, and it was really boring. And I mean, there was the occasional fight, but it really didn't keep me interested. And I like the way the Bastion does it with just moving around on the map. And additionally, it keeps the budget down, keeps the game time down. It all, it all really adds to it. And the last thing is the loading screens um, give some tutorials and hints on them. Like, as you can see there, it says try holding down the left trigger to, to aim better. And you're not really wasting time in these loading screens, because on slower computers, it does take a while. So it's a good use of time. And we'll play a little quick clip of what the map looks like. So as you can see, they're really smooth animation. And they're doing that same thing with the, the 2D background. And the clouds are separate images moving on top of it. it really brings it alive while keeping the, the amount of 3D down. Last thing I want to talk about is the audio. And uh, the audio is completed entirely by one person, again, Darren Korb, who uh, composed all the music for Bastion. And it's a really highly acclaimed soundtrack, and it's surprising that one man was able to do all that by himself with just a few guest artists. And I really love the way he describes it, too. He, he called it acoustic frontier trip-hop, which is, it says, an expression of Bastion's world. And you can totally tell that. When you're playing the game, you can, you can really feel the emotions that the kid's feeling, and it, it definitely adds to the game a lot. And I find myself listening to the album on Spotify and Bandcamp and like reliving the game just through the audio it's that powerful yeah I think the audio is like wraps the whole package of the game into just this awesomeness honestly uh, like uh, John was saying the soundtrack is uh, you know we can just listen to that without the game at all but that plus you know everything else that the game has just really brings it all together so for us going into this game design class, Bastion was really inspirational play because it was this perfectly polished game by such a few number of people, which is important when you're when you're on a budget of time like we have with only a semester. And this game is just absolutely incredible. It sold fifty, I think, five hundred thousand copies at this point mm -hmm. over Christmas, and it's gotten tons and tons of awards. And we're really glad that we were able to find this game. You know, something that's funny, you know, before uh, we started taking this class, like, those are the, you know, budget and how many people were in the game design, you know, things that, you know, I didn't think about. I, you know, would automatically just pick up the game and just think about the storyline. But uh, after the start of this class, you know, budget means a lot of things. Time is a huge thing and how many people are actually on it. And uh, for us to dissect it and find out, you know, how long it took, how many people were on it, it just amazed me. Amazed John as well. I mean, this game is... I'd say, uh, you know, it was a really good game, and I can't wait to finish playing it. All right, thanks so much.